Hey guys, my name is Emma and today I have a crazy story for you. So I was raised in a fundamental Muslim household, Salafi Islam, my entire life and it wasn't until my early 20 seconds that I was able to escape the clutches of that religion. My upbringing was quite restrictive, I was forced to wear hijab at the age of 8. Really I was manipulated into asking for it and that was held against me for over a decade. I was also forced to attend Dugsi which is essential sat. Some religious classes where you forced to memorize the Quran in Arabic, not my native tongue BTW, and if you faltered or made too many mistakes you would be beaten by a stick. You'd also be hit if you giggled or laughed in class so basically I was beaten all the time and if I told my mom she would inevitably take the side of the teacher and beat me herself at the end of it. Because I was born a girl a lot of my childhood was restricted. I wasn't able to wear pants or go out with friends to the movies or do anything really outside of the home. With the exception of school my parents weren't complete monsters. I was also told that I was effectively lesser because of my gender and that my only purpose was to be a good daughter and inevitable wife. Any disobedience was strictly dealt with, first with physical beatings but eventually with harsh words and emotional abuse. Even things like riding a bike or swimming were restricted, which sucked as I was very athletic growing up. Inevitably in my teens I rebelled hard. The catalyst was that I was in honors courses in HS and had great grades but I was struggling in math. 85% plus average in all my courses but sadly only a 73% in math and my mother promised that I could have my first ever birthday party. Sweet 16 seconds were super trendy when I went to school. And growing up it was harem to celebrate birthdays so I never had any presents or parties or even a HBD so at the time this felt like a hill worth dying over. If I could get my math grade high enough. I was about 2% shy of the grade my parents wanted me to make. So instead of a party I was allowed to obtain my learner's permit with no driver's training or opportunity to learn on their car so the license was effectively useless. At that point I realized that my family would always move the goalpost and that asking for permission would get me nowhere. I had an older brother who did terribly in school and he would never get punished but would rather be celebrated whenever he would do even the smallest thing right. I, he if he got a most improved award we would go out to celebrate but if I had only English. Humanities awards my mother would be disappointed that I didn't get better awards in math, sciences and just sigh and wish that my more successful classmates were her kids instead. Despite having a summer job I was never allowed to buy my own clothes. I was never allowed to go out with friends to the movies or do anything innocent so I decided I would stop caring to ask and would just do them. That culminated in my family sending me to their country of origin after discovering that I had drank alcohol when I was 17. I was essentially tricked and held prisoner for several months until I was able to contact the Canadian embassy who rescued me and brought me back home. I felt guilty for leaving them and since I was still a teen with little to no prospects I ended up moving back in to complete my final year of HS. They all held this over my head and made me beg for forgiveness. Unfortunately at the time I believed I was completely in the wrong so I did just that. Fast forward a year later, I was attending a local university, met my now husband and moved out with him by 20. They were okay with this because he was also from a Muslim background despite not being raised in a religious household at all. I truly believe that I wouldn't have gotten married so young if I didn't have such a religious family and whilst I am still very much in love and in a happy marriage dot 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 it could have gone far worse and I could have trapped myself in an abusive relationship. Would never recommend my future children to marry so young as not everyone's story ends up as happily as mine did. By the time I hit 23 I had lived away from home for three years and had slowly been cutting my family out of my life. I would start visiting them without hijab or a long skirt and would take months between visits and calls despite living in the same city. By the time I was 25, I was completely out of the religion of Islam and honestly quite bitter and angry for the years I wasted worshipping a deity who hated women, the LGBTQ plus community and basically anyone who wasn't a true Muslim. So I refused to keep in contact with my family, even going as far as to move, but did not change my number. Hey guys, let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this story. I felt bad for cutting off all members of my family as I was honestly not strong enough for the confrontations and the manipulations and figured that a full cutoff was best. Sadly this meant my own siblings were cut off as well. I attempted at 27 to get back in touch with my older brother but he was angry and felt that I abandoned him so he had some really cruel words to say so I decided to stop trying. Another year or so has gone by and I messed up by picking up the phone the other day after several missed calls from a new number. I have a rule to always pick up if the same number calls back more than once in the event that someone I know or care about might be in trouble. It was one of my uncles who wanted to reopen our relationship. This uncle was one that was a bit of a kindred spirit and felt more human in a sense dot 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 he. 
wasn't as religious as the rest of them and understood how strict our family was. He mentioned how my parents are aging and that they are incredibly sad to not be in contact with me and that I was always the favorite. I DK why I'm being called the favorite now because I know for a fact that my older brother was given more freedom and less responsibility growing up. But I cannot help but feel so guilty since they are getting older and there is so much economic uncertainty in Canada at the moment. I'm struggling to decide whether to continue estrangement knowing that my parents are sad and want to see me again. My uncle says that I'll be haunted by this decision later on in life if I do not reconcile with them now. But it's hard to want reconciliation with people who I know for a fact haven't changed. Islam is really a poison and it ruined our relationship. If they weren't so religious, seriously more religious than even their own parents were to them, then perhaps we could have moved on but I'm pregnant now. Nobody knows in my life apart from my doctor, best friend and husband, and don't want them to hurt my daughter like how they hurt them. Not the idiot. Did your family have a tradition of women taking in their aging relatives? Is that why you're the favorite now? I don't know a thing here but in my family a lot of the time the girls end up taking care of their parents even if the boy was and remained the favorite. I don't know, it could be legit and they are sad now that they are older. It just doesn't seem likely to me. Whatever you do is the right choice for you. Just protect yourself to advice from one person pleasers to another. Not the idiot. Your parents need someone to care for them, possibly physically and financially. So now they come back and try to lure you back in. Be very very wary of this. I would suggest you gray rock for a bit. I bet they'll come out with it soon enough. My closest buddy, male 35, and my wife, female 30, could be having an affair. I, male 35, think. I had already posted this tale on another website. Most comments hold that I am not insane and that there is something going on. My closest friend once went out on several dates with this really stunning woman. He threatened to beat the crap out of her. He felt a strong attraction to her. I met her thanks to him. She ended her relationship with him after a few weeks. I have no idea how far it progressed throughout those weeks. But I am aware that my best companion is a hound. We frequently crossed paths in the single scene. We began spending a lot of time together. I ultimately hooked up with her. And we got married on weekdays. We don't get to spend a lot of time together. She is at work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I am employed from 3 p.m. till midnight. My dearest buddy is still unmarried, free, and single. He follows the same hours that my wife does. When my wife and I started seeing each other, he handled it rather well. He served as my wedding's best man. Here are the things that annoy me right now. They are far too affectionate and cordial with one another. My wife and closest buddy play fight often, putting gentle blows on each other's body. They engage in tickle wars. He once tickled my wife while sitting on top of her till she begged for mercy. He occasionally passes my wife while tickling her ribs mindlessly, and she reciprocates by tickling his. Watching another man touch my wife is not something I appreciate, and he does it rather frequently. There was once a time when a group of my friends and I visited the beach. My wife was reluctant to swim in the pool. It was somewhat chilly, so she was lying on the beach sunbathing. My closest friend wanted her in the pool with him for some reason. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to drop a like. He took my wife, who was wearing a bikini, before throwing her into the sea. My wife was on his shoulders, and I did not like seeing his hands on her naked stomach. She then attempted to submerge him. She was lying on his back, her legs around him, and her breast was against him. My best friend texts her more than he texts me. I have read some and it's borderline flirting. Do you think there's something going on or am I going crazy? Not the idiot. Your best bud is anything but. If you haven't had boundaries and consequences talking with your wife, you are long overdue. As you describe the situation, it may be too late, but what the hell do you have to lose at this point? As you know, your BB and wife are acting way too inappropriately for a wife and a good friend of yours. FWIW, I would have a sit down with the wife and explain that you will no longer tolerate the behavior that ends now, and if she has a problem with this, she is free to pursue a relationship with a good friend as a divorced woman. Then, have a conversation with a good friend to let him know he is no longer welcome in your home and around you and your wife. Then watch how things play out. This may require some discreetly placed cameras and VARSBE. Prepare to file for divorce if neither can stay away from each other. Good luck. Stand your ground because if you back down or accept negotiations from either, you will only prolong your pain and whatever respect they have left for you will be zero. Not the idiot. This does not seem right. The start of your post was a little confusing. Did he threaten to beat up your wife before you met? Then you started dating her. Now they're very close. They do not respect you. Why are you hanging out with him at the beach, or anywhere for that matter? 
you need to sit your wife and friend down and set boundaries. No physical contact, and I'd say and see if you're not around. I would start looking into a lawyer just in case. See what your options are. Hey guys, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe.